This lecture includes some things to think about when you're writing chapter three on your methods and your methodology. Basically, oops, basically chapter three is your plan. Um, it's, it's what you're going to do during the data collection period of your research. And it should include information about who will be involved, what you will do, when you will do it, the timeline of you're going to do this on this week and this the next week and this at the beginning, this at the end, and where you're going to do it. So um, it should mention whether it's in your classroom, in your library, um, etc. That's the overview of what you should have. Your, it should describe your participants. I talked um, two weeks ago about participants and your first section should describe your participants, the demographics, the number, the gender, any unique characteristics they might have that pertain to your study. Uh, so if you if you were be doing um, ESL students, it would be those that do or don't have um, are or are not ESL students. Um, so anything that would add to a reader's understanding of why you chose these participants or what these participants might add to your study or um, be the be uh, inter you know have something to, pertaining to the data that you're collecting. You can include tables here if, if it's helpful for indicating your participants and for giving a good picture of your p participants, but it's not necessary, not absolutely necessary. What materials are you going to use? You should list these um, in what you're going to use, and this could include surveys, tests, books, programs, software programs, signage you're going to use. If you're going to bring in, like if you were doing makerspaces and you're going to use robots, you could include that. If you're, you know, our math example that we've had throughout the semester, our manipulatives, that wonderful word I can't say, that would certainly be, you know, I'm going to use uh, manipulatives in the form of small squares. They might have a brand name, you can include that. Um, so that we know what materials you're using. You should indicate your pre-intervention procedures. What's going to happen? Is there anything that needs to happen before you begin collecting data? So are you going to need to give them training on software? Some, some uh, studies might use a new software and they want everybody to start from Knowing how to, for example, if you're asking somebody to, uh, students who haven't used Google before to, to use Google Forms, maybe you need to spend a, a session before that teaching them how to use Google Forms. Um, maybe you need to train them on a new software so they're all ready to start with that software when it starts. There, there might be a number of things that you need to do in order to have everybody starting at the same point when you begin collecting your data. This is a good place to put your um, why you selected your participants and how you're going to group your participants. Um, if you're having you know, a, a one group doing one thing and another group being a control group or not doing or doing something else, indicate that um, and, and why you decided to group them that way. Your pre-intervention assessments, if you're going to do some kind of post, pre and post test or pre-assessment to get some kind of baseline measure, initial surveys that you're going to then take again, these would be considered pre-intervention assessments and should be listed here. Anything um, that is an assessment that you're going to use here or here um, that you're going to collect data with or use, you should have a, a copy of it in your appendix. So if you're going to give, give a pre-assessment, there's probably not as much here, but if you're going to indi indicate what software you're going to use, and you might put your training procedures in your um, appendix. But here, any survey that you give the students, uh, it should be in, a uh, copy should be put as an appendix. Um, anything you're going to, um, any uh, surveys you give, even the types of measurement, 
uh, if it's you know a, a well-known measure that you're going to um, that people would know what it is and it's uh, not something that you can reproduce um, you know if it's uh, and SAT scores that doesn't apply to anything you're doing but that's nothing you can't put that into the appendix but other kinds of baseline measures that you might take a lot of some of you are developing your own surveys some of you are using adapted surveys the, whatever you give to your students should go in your appendix and when you do appendixes um, they should appear in the order that they appear that they're mentioned in your text. So if you men, uh, mention that you're going to do uh, a, an assessment of their skills in the pre-intervention -assess, pre assessments, that should be Appendix A. If there's something within the intervention that we need to have a copy of the um, the uh, something that you're going to use, uh, uh, some record that you're going to use that you're going to keep track of or you're going to show them or you're going to use and you want it in your appendix, that should be appendix B. So, you know, when you when I go and look, I shouldn't say appendix I is the very first thing that I see. It just makes it a little more organized when you're reading through it. Your intervention procedures. This is a description of what you will do during your study, your interventions, or um, you know, some of you have interventions, some of you are observations, some of you um, will be uh, interventions is a broad term meaning anything you're going to do to change uh, what they might like. If you're doing a, a pretest, then you're going to do something during your your uh, collection of data time. Um, how are you going to do that? What it, what are the records? You know, some one. Um, Somebody last year did, uh, they were, uh, you know, taking surveys at different points or have, having focus groups at different points during their six weeks. Indicate when you'll do that, who you'll do that with, um, and, and this, this intervention procedure should really just lay out everything you're going to do during the six weeks you're collecting data, including a timeline is great. You could do it in a, in a table form. You could just do it as you label this is week one, and we're going to do this. This is week two, and I'm going to do this. Um, and it should include what you're doing with all participants. If you're doing something with group A or with these three students, and that can be a group at this time, um, then tell me what you're doing with group B also um, at the same time. You know, just it's a blueprint. It's a layout of everything you're going to do so that if I wanted to repeat this this uh, data collection, I could do it by looking at what you've done and repeat and and I'd have the all the material I needed. I'd know when you did what, um, and I'd be able to um, repeat. The, your experiment basically and then oops I forgot post intervention procedures I got carried away um, post intervention procedures should be um, any uh, if you're doing a pre and post test what you would do then <clears throat> what you're going to do at the end. If you're doing closing surveys, include those. If your survey is slightly different, if your survey at the beginning is slightly different from your survey at the end, put a copy of that it's different survey in your appendix also. And um, so anything they're going to do after your data is collected in, and, and in order to make assessments, um, that should be in your post-intervention procedures. All of these headings are um, included and a little explanations uh, are included in the detailed outline of chapters one to three which I will put in another copy of in your um, under the tab this week. I'm also going to try to find a example of it. Um, I don't have one there right now but I'm going to try and put one up on that tab. So things to remember, this whole chapter needs to be written in the past tense. Um, write it as if you've already done it, because when it when I read it, it 
for the final time after the whole thing is done, it will have happened. You will have done this already. Anybody who's reading this, um, except for me when I read it before you do it, will have it, it will be happening in the past. Um, this is your blueprint. So everything you're going to do should be here. It, it sh you should have it all mapped out by the by the time we finish. And I, until I've re read your chapter threes and said, okay, go ahead, you should not begin to collect data. Um, so, uh, you know, I may not get your chapter twos back to you right away, but I will at the end of the semester make sure that your chapter three has gotten back to you quickly so that in January, if you want to start collecting data, you'll be able to. We, we will go back and forth with that. Um, but it's like kind of like a lesson plan in a way. It should have everything written out, the steps you're going to do, not all the other kind of stuff, but any kind of plan for what you're going to do, um, not necessarily day by day because different days might not, you know, might not change but if you're going to do if you do happen to have students over five days you might be having have be having them do something different each of the five days we had one study that was spending 20 minutes a day with her students doing a particular thing so she had much more um, information you know a, a more detailed timeline that way if you're doing something once a week because you've only got the students once a week uh, then then your your timeline and blueprint will look a little different also make sure that your procedures lead to you being able to collect data that reflect what you want to find out in your hypothesis. We may need to adjust one or the other to make sure they align. And you may find as you're writing your blueprints, you're writing your methods chapter, that you realize this isn't going to answer the question that I want answered in my that I have at the beginning. So we may need to change the methods or we may need to change the hypotheses and we will work on that together um, as as we write uh, these two chapters so I've talked to a lot of you already about your hypotheses uh, as you turn in that second draft of chapter one um, I will reread that so one and three are the chapters I'm going to focus on um, once they're turned into me. I would like to meet with you all one more time um, as you're writing chapter three. Um, if you have questions about how to do it, if you want me to do it, to take a look at it, um, I, it just to, to reconnect one more time as you're finishing everything up before the end of the semester or whenever you need my help. Um, and please, if you want to set up an appointment, just let me know and we can talk. So that's your quick overview of your chapter three, and um, I look forward to reading them. Thank you.